In three words, can you sum up your average day in Parliament? Questions, debates, votes. What's your opinion on having a female Doctor Who? Oh, well, I'm afraid I haven't watched Doctor Who since Tom Baker <laughs> was the Doctor Who, which is now quite a long time ago. But I think it's great. I think that the whole point of Doctor Who is that the person changes. And I remember when John Pertwee ended and Tom Baker came on, and you always think the new Doctor Who can't possibly be as good as the old. And then the new one turns out to be just as good, if not better. So I think it's very, it's very exciting and it's the right thing for them to be doing. Um, what type of school do your children go to and what is your opinion on grammar schools? Um, my children go to a London day school and the eldest is nine. I've got six children, nine, eight, seven, five, one and zero. So the two littlest ones don't go to school at all. Uh, I think grammar schools are a valuable part of our overall educational settlement but they are not the answer to all the issues in education that there are. So I would support the ones that there currently are, but I think it was a mistake for the Conservatives to make grammar schools so significant a part of the last general election campaign. Um, under current government proposal at our school we will have lost around £840 per pupil by 2021 which is the equivalent to 25 teachers. Are these sort of cuts happening to your children's schools? Um, in North East Somerset, the schools are going to be getting more money because they've been consistently underfunded for decades compared to neighbouring schools. That It's been extraordinarily unfair. But if you have been a few yards over the border in Bristol, your funding has been higher for decades than schools in North East Somerset, even though a lot of pupils from Bristol Across the border to go into North East Somerset schools. So schools in North East Somerset will be getting more funding, but that is putting right a deep historic unfairness. Do you still think Brexit will be a success? Oh, I think Brexit will be a triumph. I think Brexit is hugely in the national interest and is going to help improve people's standard of living. Why do I think that? Well, um, we had a question yesterday, for example, on the development of solar power. Solar power is very heavily subsidised because uh, we won't buy cheap solar panels from China, we buy expensive ones from Germany because we're obliged to under the customs union. Once we've left, we'll be able to cut the cost of solar power, cut the cost of people's energy by importing freely from China. That's a great advantage. Likewise, with food, uh, we will be able to stop protecting food from continental Europe, but citrus fruits, for example, which we don't grow any citrus fruits in the UK. Uh, have high tariffs on them to stop them coming in from the United States and other places so that we protect Spanish fruit growers. Well, that's not in the interest of British consumers. And the poorest in society are the ones who spend the largest part of their budget on energy, on food, or on clothing and footwear. And these are some of the areas that are most heavily protected and higher prices created by a member of the European Union. So I think it's going to be really positive. Um, in our manifesto, we talked about the legalisation of marijuana. As a libertarian, what do you think about this policy? I think you raise a very good and important question. And there is a strong argument for saying that people can make decisions for themselves and they can make informed decisions as to whether they should use marijuana or not. And this applies to other drugs as well. And cigarettes are legal and therefore why not um, extend this? The difficulty I have with that is that there is increasing evidence that marijuana can lead to psychological problems for people of a sometimes quite devastating kind, and that with the laws as they currently are, you provide a degree of protection to people. And although I see that if you're an absolutist, if you're an ideologue, you would say that the libertarian argument should prevail because it would be logical in terms of other liberal things that we do in society. I think if you have a system of protection that is saving people and is protecting and preserving their lives, their happiness, their welfare, then you are right to keep the ban in place unless there is overwhelming evidence to the contrary. So I think the onus of proof is on those who want to change the law, and I don't think they have managed to establish that the extra risks would be worth taking. You voted against same-sex marriage. Doesn't this contradict your libertarian views? Um, 
I don't have any concerns with how people choose to lead their life. That's completely a matter for them. But the history of marriage is that it is a sacrament, and the definition of a sacrament uh, is with the church, not with the state. So it was a, essentially an issue between church and state. Uh, but I don't want to tell people how to live, lead their lives. They need to be free to do as they wish. Um, what is your opinion on nuclear weapons, and especially Trident? Uh, it is very important that we maintain an independent nuclear deterrent, uh, that we see unstable countries looking to develop nuclear weapons. We want to ensure that the UK um, has the ability to defend itself against rogue states, but also as part of the general system of global deterrence, which has kept the peace since 1945. Not everywhere, but we have had no world war since 1945, no use uh, of nuclear weapons since then, and that has been a very important protection and safeguard, and I think the insurance policy of having Trident is money very well spent. From reading your voting record, we saw that you voted against investigations into the Iraq war. Can you expand and tell us why you uh, voted this way? Oh, the, these um, studies on people's voting record are completely misleading. Uh, I vote in the way that the Conservative Party votes in the overwhelming majority of votes. And what happens is that you have uh, opposition de day debates where the Labour opposition puts down a motion that says it's in favour of motherhood and apple pie and wants the government to do something. Um, and uh, the government says it doesn't want to do this, it wants to carry out its own policy for which it's got a mandate. And government MPs routinely back the government. Uh, and so you see on They Work For You that Tory MPs have voted against all these motherhood and apple pie things. That's not real. We've just voted against opportunistic Labour amendments. Um, I was completely in favour of the Chilcot report. I think Chilcot's report has been extremely important. But it took time to complete. And so an opportunistic motion for another report into Iraq was, I think, essentially irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, what is your opinion on lowering the voting age? It's a really interesting question, because it's one of those things on which I don't have a very strong view. Now, I've got strong views on almost everything you can <laughs> shake a stick at. I, I, when I was 16, I would have loved to have had the vote. And I think lots of 16s are entirely able to vote and would be interested in doing it. And that whatever age you set is essentially arbitrary. It should be 16, 18, 21. It, it, it's a decision society makes without any right or wrong answer. The only caveat I would have is that it would seem to me to be odd to say that people could vote at 16, but they couldn't buy a pint at 16. That I think if you're going to say votes at 16, you should say you should drink alcohol at 16, you should smoke at 16, and perhaps you can fight in the army at 16. If the, the age of voting is the age of maturity, and it should be a consistent age throughout most of the activities you may perform within society, rather than having random ones uh, for different things. Um, am I right in saying that uh, a big part of the um, Conservative manifesto was to remove uh, free school meals? Well, it wasn't a big part of the manifesto. It was, it, it was to remove free school meals uh, from people who never used to get them, um, to ensure that free school meals remained for people uh, who were uh, in receipt of certain benefits, or whose parents were in receipt of certain benefits. The, the, the point being that um, until, I suppose, about 2013, free school meals hadn't been a universal benefit. They'd been there for people who needed them, and everyone else had paid for their school meals. So it was just going to get back to that status quo and would have saved a modest amount of money in the total scheme of government expenditure, and the idea was to be replaced uh, with school breakfasts, which in the way families now live can be more important because in many families where both parents are working, children get dropped off at school quite early uh, and often having not had breakfast. So that was the broad policy. The Conservatives didn't do well enough in the election to implement it, so it's, it's been dropped. I think that's... Is that everything? Well, I, I, I was saying at the beginning, as I don't eat breakfast, I was never really very enthusiastic about this free school breakfast thing. Um, uh, excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, very good, tough questions. So you're budding, you're budding Jeremy Paxman. Uh, <laughs>